Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Chat. Mike Sorg here in the uh, Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, part of AwesomeCast.net. Please go over there, subscribe, and follow us on social media, and check out all the other interviews that we're doing. A lot of awesome people around Pittsburgh and beyond in technology and social media and bloggers and all kinds of fun fun stuff. Uh, so please go check it out and all the shows uh, live, typically recording here live around Tuesdays at live.sorgatronmedia.com. And you can keep an eye on the Twitters and the Facebooks events for uh, all the uh, specific times that you can join us here live as well. Uh, so with me, I'm really excited to have uh, somebody on I've, I've talked to a, a few times uh, before this uh, with Tech Shop Pittsburgh. Less guys of uh, Tech Shop. He's the senior accounts manager and what was your other thing? Uh, <laughs> community <laughs> engagement uh, person over there at uh, Tech Shop Pittsburgh over on Bakery Square. An awesome, awesome facility. I've had some time uh, in there, uh, hanging out, helping some people with some projects and, and seeing some presentations. How you doing today, Les? Hey, sure. Yeah, I'm, d- I'm doing great. Doing great. Happy to be on the show. Uh, you know, like you said, we've had some conversations in the past and uh, been meaning to, to get on the, the awesome cast and, and chat with you about the, the cool things that, you know, that have been happening here in, in, at Tech Shop Pittsburgh, uh, re- you know, really over the past two and a half years. But, uh, you know, just Every every week seems like there's a new uh, project or a new member coming in, and uh, you know, really really developing a new skill and uh, you know, bringing something something new to the table in Pittsburgh and different areas, different neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. And I know this, this is something that our, our original co-host for Awesome Cast, Rob De La Creta, uh is a really hands-on maker kind of guy. And I know this was something that he was telling me about, and 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 I was he was very excited for when when Tech Shop was coming into town again, you know, two and a half plus years ago when it was first announced. Uh, so tell me, what is Tech Shop, and what kind of people are getting in there? Ah, uh, so you know, really, we you know we describe ourselves as a as a member member based open access DIY fabrication studio. So you know, what, what does all that mean? Uh, well, really, it's a membership just like a gym. So instead of having uh, all the workout equipment that you have at a gym, we have fabrication equipment. So anything from 3D printers, laser cutters, welding, woodworking, metalworking, uh, plastics, uh, electronics, textiles. I mean, you can build just about anything here. Uh, and when we say we're, we're open access, I mean, this is really the, the most important piece of what we do. Uh, so really any anyone in the city can access the membership you know you don't you don't need to have an engineering background or a design background uh, you know really um, you know it's it's just a matter of having a curiosity uh, and trying to uh, trying to drive a project forward and uh, we're you know we say we're a DIY shop so you know that's a do it yourself a lot of times it's DIT uh, do it together uh, and we see a lot of collaborations in the space that way uh, but we teach classes on every piece of equipment. So, you know, we're talking about all the equipment I just mentioned. Uh, we're, we have a curriculum where we can teach anyone in the city uh, any any piece of equipment. So uh, it doesn't matter, you know, what your background is. If you have an idea, you want to bring it to life, uh, this, you know, this is the place to do it. That's awesome. And we're showing some shots there as we're talking here from, uh, it looks like uh, you were on TAE talking about the, uh, the, the, the facility here a little bit ago. Um, so, I mean, this is a really kind of like hands-on, especially with the, the maker movements that are going on. You get, you have everything from 3d printers to machines. I don't even know. Um, and I grew up with my dad as a machinist. So, <laughs> uh, so, so, so what, who, who would be considering, uh, going into the tech shop? Uh, so really it's, uh, it's anyone. We kind of say our members are, you know, artists, engineers, uh, you know, we, we have folks that, you know, have an art project they want to bring to life and they need access to a vacuum former. Um, we have engineers who, you know, have developed a product and they, they need to prototype it and uh, go through the iteration process so that they can uh, they can produce it for for manufacturing. Um, so and then we have folks, you know, they're they're doing projects on their home, um, you know, you know, just home restoration, um, you know, doing some custom work within their home. Um, and we have the tools that they need to, to access and, and produce those projects. And 
you know, this time of year, sort of, you know, we have uh, a lot of, a lot of people gearing up for the holidays, uh, making gifts, uh, custom gifts, you know, personalized custom gifts uh, here, you know, using the laser cutters, uh, using the 3D printers um, and, and really bringing together some, you know, some project ideas they may have uh, that are just the perfect fit for, uh, you know, for a family uh, or family or friend that, uh, you know, for the holiday season. Awesome, awesome. Now, and, and, and this is, again, kind of in the entrepreneurial spirit. We have a lot of companies on here talking about things. Uh, and, and, and I definitely know there's a few companies coming out of here. Uh, I know Soul Power. I found a video on them. It's some, somebody I've seen uh, kind of around at certain events talking about uh, what they're doing uh, uh, featured here at, at, at Tech Shop. Uh, but but uh, Three Rivers Gastronomy uh, as well uh, does some work with. Uh, they, they had a really good program. Now, you guys have a veterans program, actually, through there, right? Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. We actually had uh, the the head of the SBA, the Small Business Administration, uh, visit us here just earlier today to give a to really give a nod and recognition to our our veteran program. Um, that's really what brought us to Pittsburgh. Uh, so this uh, this veteran program uh, would set up so that you know any veteran can access one year of membership and three hundred and fifty dollars worth of training at the shop. Uh, it's just a simple application form, uh, and that started here in Pittsburgh. It's a national program. Uh, we've actually been able to provide this for close to 3,000 veterans across the country. Uh, we've had well over 300 here who have access to training, access to membership. Uh, about more than half a dozen of them have been able to start their own businesses or side businesses, uh, and a lot of them have you know, connected with the community in the shop and really uh, you know, found contract work or just found a, a community where they're, they're able to, to learn and, and build on skills uh, and, and connect, the, you know, with the, the really creative uh, class of, of Pittsburgh. It really kind of, it looks like it, it really uh, adds a lot of accessibility to make these things happen, right? Yeah, it's, and that's really it goes back to that that open access piece. Um, you know, a lot of these tools are, you know, the tools that used to live in industrial parks and and research labs and only a, you know, a finite amount of people had access to them. So we, you know, our whole thing is, uh, our whole mission at tech shop is, you know, democratize the access to these tools, you know, provide the access at a, at a fraction of the cost to, to everybody across the board. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, where you're coming from. If you, if you're going to college or you're working for a big, uh, big company, you know, you, you have an idea, you have a place where you can go, you can learn the skills, you can access the tools you need. Uh, and you know that that's that's something that we've never had in the past that 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 access to to the tools and um, we live in a really exciting time too because you then you have access to capital through crowdfunding so that's a that's a big uh, big piece of what we see too we've seen just here in Pittsburgh uh, I think nine or ten successful Kickstarter campaigns uh, for hardware companies that have come uh, come out of the space. And also, you guys, you have a, a close proximity to uh, Alpha Lab as well, at least currently. Yeah, we Alpha Lab is one of our uh, one of our great partners. Uh, Innovation Works, Alpha Lab Gear, uh, they're they're located just down the road, uh, and all their companies have access to the membership and training at at Tech Shop. So uh, when they come on board uh, as an Alpha Lab Gear company, uh, you know Alpha Lab Gear is investing in them and it, and they're providing business acumen and uh, sometimes legal advice as well as uh, a network of, of uh, follow-on investment and uh, really all, you know, all the, the core things you need to start a business. Um, and it's a perfect pairing because Alpha Lab Gear is providing that and we're providing the, the fabrication facility where they can uh, you know, produce their products, prototype their products at a fraction of the, the cost if they were to outsource or I try to do it elsewhere. That's great. That's great. So of course, you know the big thing, the maker movement is is a really big deal. We had a maker fair here uh, in in recent uh, months here at Pittsburgh, uh, and, and it seems like all anybody's talking about in, in technology these days and, and these startups and everything. Um, and I know you guys have like three D printers. You know, I mean, there's not too many places you can get your hands on a three D printer these days. Yeah, I mean the three three D printers are becoming more. Um, more and more accessible, um, but but really, I mean, the maker movement is 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 growing. You know, it's it's becoming uh, more you know more of a common uh, common term that 
folks are realizing, you know, in, in maker education, we do a lot of uh, a lot of youth programs here. We're finding that, you know, some schools are are, are now, you know, bring 3D printers into the classroom, um, and we're you know we're helping to kind of infuse what um, what's possible with the curriculum uh, in their in their classroom as well. Um, but you're seeing 3D printing become, you know, more ubiqu- ubiquitous across across the board. Um, but really, um, you know, having access to the 3D printers we have here and then in combination with other tools, too. So we do, um, for example, say aluminum casting. Um, you can take an old process like uh, that's been around for a long time. Uh, aluminum casting we do here at the shop. Um, and you're able to take a 3D print uh, that you've designed, uh, 3D print that and then use that. Uh, to uh, to cast so you know it's it's the combination of the tools um, and, and you know 3d printing plays into that in a big way um, but but it's really the software as well uh, you may notice the uh, poster that's that's behind me here this is uh, an autodesk poster uh, it's one of our one of our biggest partners uh, here at tech shop and we have uh, you know every computer loaded with a uh, full suite of Autodesk software. So that's your you know 3D modeling and machining software, and that's really what drives all these machines. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's that's the powerful thing that uh, that's that's pushing this movement forward. You know, that to be able to 3D model uh, and and transfer that file to a 3D printer um, or a CNC milling machine, um, the learning curve is just uh, is is drastically decreased. I mean, you're you're able to learn these things. Uh, where as before you, you needed to go into a complex, uh, you know, complex mathematics or G code only, you know, say 15 years ago. So it's getting out of the way of, of, of actually creating things. That's kind of nice. Um, I, I mean, we've seen that in video. We've seen that in audio production. We've seen that in a lot of ways over the years. And it's kind of nice to like, it's actually getting to that point where the creators can get past the technical side and just make things. Yeah, and that's and that's that's really the the strength of uh, the maker movement is that the the tools are more powerful. Um, they're becoming cheaper to access, and uh, you know, and 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 the, you know, having places uh, that that are you know providing the knowledge you need, just like just like tech shop and and the, and knowledge being more ubiquitous as well. You know, you're able to access a lot of this information um, on the web, and Autodesk does a great job of the tutorials on on how to use their software and. And we teach classes, you know, you can learn uh, in person with uh, with our instructors. And that's really what our class curriculum here is about. You know, across the board, we have um, we have classes on every piece of equipment. Um, and it's, you know, it's a small class size. So you come into the shop and you're you're interested in learning. Um, you know, you don't need to be a member. So actually, anybody can come in and take a class. Uh, so if you're, you've always wanted to learn how to weld, you know, you've always wanted to learn how a vacuum former works or learn more about electronics. Uh, anybody can come in and take a class. So we teach these classes. And, you know, the core of it is that we they're small class sizes. So you have you know, two to five people. Sometimes, uh, you know, the maximum class size is four. Uh, it's you know, a small class. It's hands on learning. You're, you're using that equipment. And we have, you know, expert instructors that come from all around the city. You know, they're they're coming from universities and machine shops, and really, the you know the common thread between all our instructors is that they're they're an expert in their craft. They're really passionate about it, and they're uh, and and they're great at teaching. Uh, they're great at spreading that that craft to others, and and um, and that that's that's the core of uh, of you know the maker movement. It's 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 just the access to the knowledge, access to the equipment, and then you have a supportive community that behind it all. Excellent. And speaking of uh, people uh, uh, dropping in, you had a pretty special guest here uh, a little bit ago in President Obama. Yes, yes, we did. <laughs> uh, it was quite quite an honor to to have President Obama here at the shop. Uh, this was actually uh, last summer um, in June of last summer, uh, and and really, really was here to to nod towards what Tech Shop is doing. What we're doing here is the you know, we're like I said, democratizing the access to the tools. Uh, it's it's the power behind you know having having a shared resource in the city. You know, these tools that we we wouldn't be able to operate you know as a business uh, if it wasn't for everybody. You know, it, it takes a village, right? It takes the it takes the entire city coming coming in and, and using the equipment in, in different ways, many different ways, and uh, and that's really why President Obama was here is to to really nod towards you know that. This is the power of 
uh, of shared resources. Uh, and when we, you're able to open this up to a broader broader audience and and share these resources, um, it's it, great things can happen. And that's that's where innovation sparks too. You know, it's when I all the tools that I'm talking about here is it attracts so many different people. Um, so that's the really the coolest thing that we've seen here in the shop the past two, two and a half years is that, you know, it, innovation sparks when you have people working on robotics and working on jewelry and working on musical instruments and, uh, and working on products that they're bringing to market. Um, and they're all mixing it up in the same space. And, and you start to see, oh, well, okay, I can, I can look at things a little bit differently now. Um, so you talk about cross disciplines and everything like that. It's, it happened here. And, uh, yeah, it was quite an honor, quite a surreal day to have President <laughs> Obama here at the shop. And we had 50 members uh, as well as our staff all here uh, to to talk to him. And, and uh, he answered a lot of questions and and, and really uh, one of the coolest things uh, part part of the day, actually, he uh, he brought out uh, he had one of his staff members bring out a dodo case, which is uh, actually an iPad, uh, iPad book binding case. Uh, it's really, uh, really slick case. Um, and it was it was prototyped and built in tech shop San Francisco, uh, and President Obama you, you know uses the dodo case, and <laughs> he had one of his staff members bring it out and said you know this this was made this was made at tech shop and um, now you know that company um, you know I forget how much they do per year but you know it's a, a sixty million dollar company and they're they're based out of San Francisco they have their own manufacturing facility um, and that's um, that that idea grew out of the shop into a business, and and that's what we're seeing in Pittsburgh too. That's the coolest thing is that these companies are starting, um, and and, you're, and we're at the point right now where we're seeing uh, seeing them actually grow and graduate the space. Uh, you know, you mentioned Soul Power. Um, there's there's a, a dozen, probably two dozen different companies now at this point that have gotten their start here, and a lot of them, you know, we kind of say quote unquote. Uh, they've graduated the space, you know, they're, they're still members here. They're still uh, working on their next iteration, but they're in the manufacturing phase and they're, they're growing into some of the uh, spaces that are, we see around the, uh, around our area uh, here in, here in East Liberty, um, even into Larmer and Homewood. Um, some of the, the buildings that, um, that have long since been unused, uh, you know, these companies are starting to move in there and, and turn them into assembly uh, spaces and uh, and use them as their their offices and uh, so we're seeing some really amazing growth happening um, and you know I, I feel like we're really at the, the heart of a lot of it. Awesome, awesome! I, I think I found the spot with the dodo case and also I want to point out if you're on video, look you see that that uh, that 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 art in the background looks very familiar to where he's sitting right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but anyways, so uh, th this is awesome. I, I love the stuff coming out of Tech Shop. It's uh, it's really cool stuff. So I, I, you promised to try. To, we're going to try to do a virtual tour here. A bit. I know you're you're mobile over there right now. Uh, so uh, so how about how about we, we take a look around? All right, you want to give it a try? All yeah. right, you let you let me know if we're uh, if I'm keeping it stable. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna reverse the screen here. Okay, kind of give you guys the the shot of. Uh, Get get out of my my uh, my chair here first. First time ever attempted on this show. I want to point out. <laughs> That's right. I'll put. I'm gonna put on. Yeah, this is the first. All right. This is the first time we've attempted it here at the shop too. So, put on my safety glasses and there you go. Uh, here. See if we can make a make a tour around. All right. So, you can kind of see here. Uh, right right in the uh, the hub area. So we have. Uh, I have a few folks uh, working on some projects here, uh, and we'll uh, we'll make our way. I I've talked to some of the members, and uh, they you know they said that uh, they're they're fine with uh, some video uh, going through the shop. Um, so making our way towards the uh, the electronics area, um, you can see this is uh, this is our electronics setup, and you know this is where we teach classes on anything from. You know, basic soldering to microcontrollers, Arduino as well. Um, how's the How's the view? That looks we, good. Uh, <laughs> all right, keeping it steady. All right. Um, so actually, uh, I'm going to make our way back towards the uh, towards the classroom, um, and we actually have a, a class going on right now. 
Um, so it's just a one-on-one -on -one class. Uh, they're learning the, uh, the CNC vinyl cutter. Um, so th that class uh, is just a one-on-one -on -one class. Again, I mentioned those small class sizes. Uh, we also have uh, the classroom in the back there. And let's see, we'll make our way towards the, uh, towards the more popular uh, area of the shop, which is, uh, which is the, the laser cutters and the 3D printers. So we still uh, still back there, Sorg? Yep, we're still good. We're along for the ride. Uh. All right, cool. All right, so we're up at the front space. Uh, so these are our laser cutters, and these, uh, these are really the most popular pieces of equipment at the shop. Uh, I'm going to see if one of our members will let us take a peek at uh, one of the projects that she's working on. Uh, uh, would you mind if we uh, we did a video, a little video of the what you have going? Okay. Well, uh, so you can see the laser cutter here. I'm kind of going to come into to focus. Oh, that's cool. All right. And uh, what what uh, what are you working on tonight? Okay, a medieval woodcut from. Oh wow! Oh wow! And do you mind? Do you mind being on video or? Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is a beautiful piece. Great. So this this will be cut up into small pieces and sold as a, as a jigsaw puzzle. Nice. Very very cool. Nice, nice. Um, thank you for sharing. Yeah, so these laser cutters are amazing. We, we see members using these for all types of projects. Uh, the jigsaw puzzle is a good, uh, good example of that. Um, we also uh, have our 3D printers over here. Uh, and I want to say, uh, for the, for the wood cutting that she was doing there, I've seen some of that product in person, and it's really nice, really clean. It's what you would expect if you bought something off the shelf, at, at, you know, uh, probably even better sometimes than what you get at Walmart because it's one-off, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we see final uh, final products coming off of there, uh, and the the best thing about those they're really precision tools. So you know you can uh, you, you see engineers using them for precise parts for components for their uh, for machines and other uh, prototypes, and then you see artists using them for you know uh, jigsaw puzzles and other uh, custom gifts like that. Uh, so we're we're kind of focused in on the uh, the computer hub and. Uh, we also have, uh, you can see our T-Rex that's, that's hanging from the ceiling here. <laughs> just, I mean, because you uh, got to so have, in any kind of startup community, there just has to be that goofy thing that, that's like, oh, there's just like a T-Rex head, you know. Yeah, yeah it's a, it, it has, I think it has a hat on right now. So we oh, put a hat go. on top of there. Uh, yeah, so this is something that was fabricated here uh, using the, the wood shop and our, our shop bot. I uh, can talk a little bit more about that when we make our way towards the wood shop. Uh, but you can see some different 3D prints that have been done here as well. Um, so these are just some uh, some very interesting ones. I'll kind of pick one up and show you that you know uh, this is part of the power of of 3D printing is that you know you're able to 3D print parts like this. You know this is a chess piece, um, but this is something that couldn't be machined. Uh, and you know really using subtractive manufacturing, um, you wouldn't be able to uh, produce this. But with 3D printing, you you are able to. Um, that's actually a piece from one of our summer programs uh, and an after school program, I, I should say, actually. Um, so the, the after school program, uh, actually, uh, students, uh, students are able to come into the shop um, and, you know, with our STEM coordinator and our educators here, um, they do a design and build class. And, and one, one of the students actually produced their own uh, chess set as one of their, their projects. Uh, but actually part of their uh, part of that program and I'm gonna slowly make my way into the machine shop as I'm as I'm talking here I have my safety glasses on I, I suggest if you can uh, put them on at home as well, well <laughs> everybody <laughs> virtually it. put your especially uh, unless you're driving then, then be careful <laughs> yeah be careful <laughs> put the, have the safety glasses on um, so we're in the machine shop right now uh, we have our, our manual mills here as you can see uh, and then we also have our CNC mill. Um, so CNC mill is not being used right now, but uh, this is a four axis mill and you can, you're able to uh, machine, you know, three, three dimensional parts out of, out of all different types of metals. So brass, steel, aluminum. Um, and a lot of times you'll see folks using the 3d printers that we just saw uh, in the other room uh, where 
you're able to take your 3D design and print it out for only uh, really only a couple dollars worth of material a lot of times before you bring it over to this machine, the CNC, and mill it out of, say, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of, uh, say, aluminum. So um, we see final parts coming off this machine, uh, as well as a lot of different prototypes. Awesome. Um, you can see the manual mill over here uh, that's, being, that's being run. Uh, one of our members is set up using using the manual mill, and you can see the green light is on in the background there, and that that uh, indicates that he has in fact taken the class. and And we really do stress a safe, uh, you know, safe environment here in the shop, and uh, we require you know everyone does take the class before they they come into the shop um, and and use any given piece of equipment. Uh, making our way back to the to the welding shop here. Uh, so this, uh, this is a project that looks like it's, got, it's going on right now. Uh, this is uh, looks to be a rallying, possibly, of some sort. Uh, but back here in the welding shop, we see all types of projects that are being done uh, from, you know, large-scale large art sculptures. Uh, we've seen motorcycles built from the ground up. Um, and we, we've seen all types of car parts and, um, you know, metal components uh, created back here. Uh, we teach classes on the uh, this equipment as well, as you would guess. So we have MIG and TIG welding, uh, and we also have all the protective gear you could you could imagine. So uh, gloves, masks, jackets. Uh, so a lot of really cool projects happening back in the welding area. Uh, we'll make our way through. We still uh, still looking good, Sorg. Yep. All right. So we're in the uh, the plastics area here, uh, and this right here we have our vacuum former. Um, so the vacuum former, you're able to uh, vacuum fart form all types of things here. So this, well, this clear part might not kind of see the dimension on this. Uh, so anything that you can fit into the, the table here, you're able to vacuum form over top. Um, we actually have uh, we have you know, quite a number of uses to for with the vacuum former. We have uh, one gentleman, he's uh, making stormtrooper masks here, and he sells them online. Um, so we see masks being made. We see uh, actually a lot of companies use this as a quick way to package their products. Uh, see landscape architects use this for, for models, um, and artists use it in a lot of different ways as well. Uh, this is our injection molder. Uh, so this injection molder, uh, you can actually see one of the, the dyes that has been machined here. Um, this this is a die that was CNC machined, uh, and it's actually uh, a poker chip with uh, with a gear on it. Uh, so this injection molder, we've uh, we've probably made tens of thousands of these uh, these these poker chips with gears uh, in the injection molding class. That's actually how you're you're learning to use the machine. Nice. Uh, you can see our forklift back here. You can see some uh, some metal working being done. We have our, our grinding work here. Uh, so the uh, the grinding room here looks like all is quiet. But uh, sandblasting cabinet, you're able to blast rust and paint off of things. So you see a lot of uh, you know old parts, a lot of repurposing done at the shop too. So folks are coming in, they're using uh, something that may, may have been disregarded as trash, and then uh, you know turning it into to something useful. Making our way, this we area, have uh, this area is room. this area is deceptively large. When you if you're walking by this place, like I know, I know, walking back to that area, you are uh, really kind of uh, really kind of surprised. Yeah, we're uh, our footprint here is about seventeen thousand square feet. Uh, we have uh, this now where you're in the spray uh, spray booth and powder coating booth room, the finishing room. So you're able to spray paint. Um, you know, and lacquer wood and all types of things in a controlled environment, not have to worry about the fumes. There's built-in exhaust, powder coating booth. These are sized to fit bicycles and car parts. Um, so you're able to powder coat metal. Um, and like you said, yeah, it is a it, it is a large space. We have, you know, in, for, in order for us to have all this equipment in one space, uh, we, we always have uh, you know, 17,000 or more uh, square foot footprint here. Um, so this back here, this is our, our most uh, powerful piece of equipment in the shop. This is our, our water jet cutter. Uh, so this will cut through, you know, three or four inches of really anything on the planet. So you're talking granite, steel, titanium. 
uh, this, this will cut right through it. Um, and we see a lot of uh, small manufacturers using this. Um, and then we see all, all types of projects being done. So it's, it's not just those hardened materials that you can cut on here, but you can cut foam or carpet, uh, any material, you name it. Uh, the only thing this won't cut is, is plated glass. Uh, it'll actually shatter if, uh, if you try to cut plated glass. But, but otherwise, this, uh, this machine is, uh, is, is really, <laughs> to have access to one of these uh, is, is an incredible, incredible thing. Uh, and, and again, you know, it's, a, it's, it's anyone in the city can, can, can learn how to use that piece of equipment. Um, you know, in, in a matter of four hours, we're able to teach, uh, bring anyone up to speed on, on how to operate. So we'll uh, take a look into the wood shop here, see what's going on. You guys can't tell, but this is the best smelling smelling part of the shop. Uh, so we have all types of uh, equipment from you know the basic things you find in in the wood shop, from your your bandsaw to a table saw. Uh, we have a joiner and planer. Uh, you can see uh, one of our members working on uh, possibly a table at the at the moment. Um, we have uh, our CNC wood routers, so our small shop bot. And the larger shop bot over here. Uh, this uh, this machine, uh, actually, all the tables that we have set up in the shop, uh, where the computers are and our front desk, uh, we're all done on the on the shop bot here. Um, so this is a CNC machine, computer numerically controlled, uh, and you're able to take a you know take a computer design and have the machine route it for you. Make uh, make our way back onto the part of the shop where we don't need uh, where we don't need safety glasses. See uh, engine block here. I, I gotta uh, somebody... ask, was, was this super loud in that room? It was. Did uh, <laughs> could you could you hear me? No, no. The, uh, the Google Hangout uh, handles that really well, apparently. <laughs> um, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Your audio changed, but it, it didn't sound loud at all. We just got like kind oh, of good. less of yep. your voice. So it was really good. It, it was uh, it was extreme extremely loud in there. Uh, yeah, uh, making our way back onto the the soft art side of the shop, um, you can see we have all types of uh, tables where members can do work. Uh, and really, any given hour um, of the week, you'll see different projects going on. Uh, anything from um, you know mass making to jewelry, robots, musical instruments, uh, you know. You, you name it, we've seen it uh, created on, on these tables. Um, and we are open 24-7. So um, the, the only time that we're not open is during, uh, during major, uh, major holidays. And, uh, you know, even if you come in here at, at 2 a.m. as a member and you're, you're able to see uh, some, some very interesting things happening uh, and, and some very cool projects. So, um, so you know, I'll make our way uh, this way. I'll show you the, just uh, – Towards the member kitchen, we always have uh, coffee and popcorn on hand. Again, <laughs> nah, that's twenty four seven. But yeah, that uh, that kind of get, gets us around the shop. But there's a couple sections I didn't get to, um, but in general, that uh, that'll that kind of gives you an idea of the space. I'm gonna flip it back to myself here. Awesome. So, so what's the what's the biggest surprise item you've seen come out of the shop? Uh, the biggest surprise item. Yeah. Um, so, you know, right now, um, I, I think we're all, uh, kind of, kind of looking towards, uh, the momentum and, and project, um, and really the, the company that's, that's come out of the space. Um, and there's, you know, still operating here. Uh, the name of the company is, is called Boxy. Um, and, and th this, this was something that I think as far as the biggest surprise was the, the, the enormous success they had with a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, so they, um, they, they have a company that is, a, is a, as they describe it, you know, a, a desktop tech shop or a desktop makerspace. Uh, so it's uh, a small uh, unit that can fit on any small table that is a CNC mill. It's also a 3D printer and a laser cutter. So this, uh, it's actually all in one unit. Um, 
they launched the Kickstarter uh, some you know five or six months ago, and mm-hmm. um, they raised one point three million dollars. Uh, and uh, I think to date, it's the the largest Kickstarter campaign in in Pennsylvania. So uh, it's this so, uh, B O X Z Y. Uh, yes, B- yes, B O B O X Z Y. That's correct. There you go. I, I think we found it here. B O X Z Y dot com. If you want to go check that out, that's cool. So yeah, yeah. So, these uh, so they, it's, it's you know, a, and, and I think the most surprising thing. It's not surprising that they're able to uh, manufacture their their first prototypes here, but just the the wild success they saw on, on Kickstarter, and you know, we and, and we've seen that with companies across the board. Um, you know, a lot of the Alpha Lab gear companies have had successful Kickstarter campaigns. Um, and, and we see, you know, all types of products being made. I, I think it's, it's not one particular thing that we see, uh, as, as being a surprise, but it's just collectively, you know, how the shop's being utilized, you know, over the past two years, we've, you know, we've seen, you know, people be able to do com- completely change their life and, in, 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 in the, in the work that they do, you know, they're able to have side businesses and side income, um, and they're able to. And in a lot of cases, you know, they've been you know, starting uh, their, own, their own businesses. And, um, and, and beyond that, you know, it's, it's really uh, some of the, um, you know, installations you start to see. Uh, that's kind of the coolest thing. When you, you go around Pittsburgh, there's actually a lot of different uh, small businesses and public art display that, that's been created at the shop. And, you know, you wouldn't really know it because, you know, it doesn't say, you know, uh, anything. There, there's no way to know that it was, it was created here. But. A lot of signs for small businesses have been created here. Uh, again, you know, fraction of the cost that uh, it would have been, and uh, small business owners being able to do that themselves. Um, some bicycle racks that that are installed in different areas of town have been created here. Um, for me, that's one of the coolest things is to go into a cafe and know that that table was made at the at the shop by one of our members. Uh, so it's it's really that local economy. You're, you're seeing, you know, you're seeing. Our, our, you know, our, our local uh, local community members being empowered to uh, to create and uh, and then provide for uh, different aspects of the city. Awesome, awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for uh, giving us a tour of the place. Uh, you got some really, really cool stuff out there. If, if you're looking even to dip your toe in this kind of thing or, or get your kids into it, or maybe your kid's already into it, this might be a place for you if you're in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, go check it out. It's uh, techshop.ws slash uh, pittsburgh.html is specifically your page, right? Anywhere else they need to go and find you? Uh, yeah, you can find us on uh, techshoppgh on Facebook, Twitter, instagram uh check out cool projects and um yeah we're over in bakery square i don't i don't think i mentioned that um so we're right in the heart of bakery square on the east end of the city um stop by anytime for a tour uh our door is always open we uh we love when you know folks come by to see what we're all about we're happy to show you around uh you can show up anytime uh really between uh we're open 24 7 but uh, <laughs> we try to keep the tours uh before uh, 11 p.m. So anytime between you know 9 a.m. and 11 p.m., you know stop by for a tour, check it out. We have a lot of new workshops that uh, that we're offering, uh, very unique, uh, cool workshops. So we've really grown uh, what the types of uh, projects you know, um, you know, uh, build it, don't buy it types of workshops, uh, blacksmithing workshops, Internet of Things workshops. Uh, so a lot of cool things, and you know, you, you know, it's 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 sometimes it's about coming in and, um, and and learning about these things and seeing, you know, hey, what 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 can I learn, and then you know, who can I meet? Um, this is a great place to connect with people as well as uh, kind of expand your horizon. Awesome, go check it out. And uh, if you like this and other uh, this interview and want to check out some more we have going on, check out the awesome chats over at awesomecast.net. Talking to a lot of great people, making a lot of great stuff here in town and beyond. Uh, so thank you, Les, for joining us. And uh, you are have been our awesome guest this week. And you guys have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.